For a while now, I've been thinking of making little animal houses for sale, using a pallet for a base with a curved corrugated iron roof and a back and a front. I thought people might like them maybe for dog houses or hen houses or play houses, that sort of thing. That's the plan anyway. The main challenge, of course, is the corrugated iron roof. It would need to be rolled over very tightly to fit a pallet. After choking at the price of new corrugated iron rollers, I decided I'd make one myself. How hard could it be? <laughs> well, it turned out to be much harder than I'd thought. First up, if you remember, I made a simple slip roller to test the principle and the materials. If a roller like this could work, then there was a good chance I could develop the same idea for what I really want. I've since modified this design a bit and it works even better. So that worked and I then set out to make some special rollers, ones that fit into the corrugations in the iron sheet. Well, steel sheet, but they call it corrugated iron, so anyway. My first attempt was to make lots of doughnuts out of four millimeter steel. My thinking was that if I measure everything carefully, they should stack together in the right shape. It wasn't a bad plan exactly. Once I'd figured out how to key them to the shaft without any welding, which would have deformed the pipe. But I gave up on it anyway, when I realized I'd need about 400 of these discs. <laughs> the weight and the cost would have been huge. So I went to talk to our local engineer. How much would he need to charge to turn these rollers out of steel stock. He just laughed at me and said, more than you can afford him, which was undoubtedly true. But then he told me that 50 years ago, there used to be a man in a neighboring town who had a roller for corrugated iron and his rollers were wooden. Aha, uh -huh, wooden rollers, eh? That sounds doable. So that's when I made my copy lathe. Because I needed these rollers to be accurate, and identical. Now I'm guessing the wooden rollers would warp unless you have really good beech wood or something, which I don't have. So I invested in some expensive birch ply instead and built up layers with lots of glue. My first attempts were all timber, but I'm glad I decided to go with a box iron core in the end, and you'll see why in a minute. And all that went well. I turned them down to a cylinder. And then I deployed a template that I'd made. And I carefully took down the shape with a square ended bit. and then finish them with a round nose bit. And so far so good. And <laughs> just as you'd expect, that's when the problem started. I set the rollers up in a frame with cog wheels to connect two of them. The third one was arranged so it could be lifted up with a jack and then it would drop out of the way at the end of the job. And the main problem is simply down to the pressure needed to roll corrugated iron. I had completely underestimated it. 
I used a hydraulic jack to lift the third roller and immediately the frame began to twist and distort when I turned the handle and I found that if things are even a tiny bit out of line then the sheet starts wandering off course and straight into the cogs or it might roll unevenly and twist. I eventually solved all that by triangulating everything with chains and bottle screws. And that brought it all back into alignment and together with another jack to even up the pressure on the third roller, I could at least roll the sheet properly. But the, <laughs> the main problem is it's really hard. It's actually difficult to roll this thing through the rollers because there's so much pressure needed. I did eventually roll a piece. I have made a corrugated iron roller. <laughs> then I rolled it some more and it's okay, but I hope I can do better than this. There are kinks where I don't want kinks. And it took hours and my arms are in pain now. So I took everything apart and I reconfigured it so the rollers were closer together. I'm guessing that's the reason for the kinks. I had to make some more sprockets so the two bottom rollers are the driven ones. And the last sheet of um, corrugated iron I had, I cut it up so, um, so as not to waste anymore. And I rolled it very carefully and it was a whole lot better. Still not perfect but much less kinky. I suspect I could keep improving the finish, but there's no way that this would be cost effective without a large motor to do the work. It's just too slow and too exhausting. So there you go, that's an insight into one of my many projects, which isn't that successful. <laughs> lots and lots of time and effort went into this one, and it's a bit disappointing really. I think I'll do something else for a while, while I plan my next move with it. Unless you have any ideas?